Hello and welcome to this video in which we will show how to compute the discrete time convolution of two discrete time exponentials. Uh, this is a problem that shows up quite often, uh, particularly in textbooks, and so hopefully you'll find this useful. So the idea is that um, we have two exponentials, one of which uh, I've written as a to the n u of n, and uh, we'll call this x. And I've uh, basically graphed um, a representative waveform here. Uh, for this particular waveform, I've chosen a is equal to 3 fourths, but we'll actually derive this for any a. Uh, this is to help us visualize what's going on. And then um, I've chosen h of n to be b to the n u of n. And again, <coughs> For the purposes of illustration, I've chosen b to b two thirds, but uh, this will our derivation will actually hold for any value of b. So our goal is to figure out how or what the convolution of this exponential with this exponential is. So to compute the convolution, uh, the first thing we need to do is flip h about the value k is equal to zero. And so I've done that. And now we need to go ahead and start uh, computing the convolution. So the convolved value y of n will be the sum k going from minus infinity to infinity of x of k h of n minus k. Okay, so what I've drawn here is the case where n is less than zero. And you can see I've taken uh, the flipped version of h, that is, it was flipped about the origin, and now it's been shifted 2 to the left. Okay, so this particular graph shows n is equal to minus 2. And you can see that um, for the case where n is less than zero, I take h and then I shift it to the left so that the non-zero parts of h align with the zero parts of x, and so the product of x and h will be zero, as we show here, and the non-zero parts of x align with the zero parts of h, so the product of these guys will be zero. So basically every term in the summation will be zero, and so for a value of n less than zero, the summation is always equal to zero. Okay, so that was easy enough. Well, let's see what happens if n is not less than zero. Okay, here I've drawn the picture for n is equal to two, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, generalize this to n, any n greater than zero. Uh, so I've taken my flipped version of h and shifted it two to the right, and now you can see that I have um, an overlap between 0 and 2 of regions where x of k is non-zero and h of 2 minus k is non-zero. And I've drawn that here. So basically, in this case, uh, y of n is going to be the summation uh, of k going from the lower limit here, and the lower limit is established by x of k. For values of k less than 0, x of k is 0, so the product of x of k and h of k will be 0. So my lower limit here is k is equal to 0. My upper limit is established by h of n minus k. Um, so in this case, um, where n is equal to 2, everything larger, every value, for every value of k larger than 2, h of 2 minus k is 0, so the product of h of 2 minus k and x of k is 0. And so, in general, my upper limit is going to be n. Okay? And the idea, then, is that I will, uh, in the case of the picture here, I'll sum these three values, and that will give me y of n. And, um, Unfortunately, I sort of left myself without a lot of space here. We'll write this very small. There, okay. 
So this is the sort of summation that we need to solve. And in fact, from this point on, we're going to do it symbolically for any value of a and any value of b. So let's uh, go to a blank screen. And again, the summation we need to work here is y of n is the summation k going from 0 to n of x of k. And you'll recall x of k is a raised to the k power. And then um, I'm leaving out the u of k because in this picture, um, the u of k has determined the limits of summation. In fact, that's probably a useful thing to point out. The lower limit is um, determined by the fact that x has this u of k term in it, which makes all of these guys equal to 0. Uh, the upper limit is determined by the fact that h of n minus k has a u of n minus k term in it, which makes all of these guys 0. So um, that's where those u of k's have gone. They're actually included in the picture, so I'm not going to include them in the expression that I write here. So we have the summation of a of k, or a raised to the k power, and um, b to the n minus k power. And again, just to make sure it's clear, uh, that's because uh, my x is given by the a to the n, h is given by uh, b to the n, but I'm actually doing h of n minus k. Okay, so all I have to do then is work this summation. And um, it's going to turn out to be not that bad. Um, I can basically write b of n, or b raised to the n minus k. In fact, here I'll write that down here. I can write this uh, as b to the n times b to the minus k. Okay, and so this b to the n is not a function of k. k is my variable of summation here. So I can actually take the b to the n outside of the summation. And I'm left then with the summation k going from 0 to n, a raised to the k power, and then b raised to the negative k power. OK. The next thing I note is that b raised to the negative k power is the same as 1 over b to the k. And so I can take this and combine it with a to the k as follows. So I have the whole thing is b to the n summation k is equal to 0 to n a over b. And both of these guys raised to the nth power. OK, now I do that because this now is a geometric series, and I know how to sum a geometric series. Um, so let's see, we still have the b to the n term out here in front. But now, uh, the sum of this geometric series, uh, where k goes from, whoops, and I've got this exactly wrong. I'm sorry. We'll change this, because this should be a k. Oops, now I can't draw. This should be a k. OK, and so we have um, the summation of these guys. And we know that the sum is going to be given by 1 minus a over b raised to the n plus 1 power over 1 minus a to the b. This is the formula that we have for um, summing geometric series. OK, and we could, if we wanted to, just leave it at this. But of course, uh, we just can't leave well enough alone. It turns out that by, um, by writing uh, this out in a, little, um, in, a, in a little different form, we can get some insight as to what it looks like. So the first thing I'm going to do is find a complicated way of expressing 1. So I'm going to write 1 here as b to the n 
plus 1 over b to the n plus 1. I'm going to write um, 1 down here as b over b. And the reason for doing that is I can then get um, these terms on a uh, over a common denominator and these terms over a common denominator. So when I do that, I still have my b to the n out in front. Now I'll have b to the n plus 1 minus a to the n plus 1 over b to the n plus 1. That's basically what I did or got up here. Divided by b minus a divided by b. Okay, we're almost done. Um, we can see that this b to the n is going to cancel all but one of the b to the n plus ones here. So that I'm left with b to the n plus 1 minus a to the n plus 1 over b, b minus a over b. And in that situation then, this b and this b will cancel, leaving me with the final result that looks like this. I have b to the n plus 1 minus a to the n plus 1 over b minus a. Okay. And um, this is kind of a handy result. It looks kind of nice. I like the symmetry. Um, and it also tells us then that the, uh, the convolution of, a, uh, of this geometric series with this geometric series is going to be a term, each term in this convolution is going to be a term that depends on b raised to the n plus 1. We subtract a and we have b minus a. Now you'll notice that in doing this, we've assumed that b is not equal to a, which we had to assume right down here because if b had been equal to a, we're dividing by 0. So this is the case where b is not equal to a, and it looks like I'm almost out of time. So in a subsequent video, we'll look at the case where b is equal to a. So uh, to finish up here, I've graphed the resulting convolution that we get. And uh, this is again for uh, a equal to 3 fourths and b equal to 2 thirds. You can see that it starts at 1, goes up for a bit, and then decays towards 0. So hopefully you found this useful. Um, hopefully it made sense. Uh, we'll do the case where a is equal to b in the uh, part 2 of this video. Thanks for watching.